Much of his time is spent dealing with men in cells and their problems, trying to comply with the Islamic strictures regarding food, prayers and morality in a system which is struggling to cope with the daily conflict of understaffing and overcrowding. You must love to pray. Okay? It's like you love your food, you love your drink. You must love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the prison kitchens, staff too have to be educated, not about prayer, but about the religious implications of preparing meals. What the imam teaches are the basics, be it the methods of prayer or regulation of diets, rather than the interpretations of jihad. Nothing that's said can be overtly political. A small number of part-time imams have been removed from prison visitor registers for crossing that line. My job is in here is to, to do good, to, to, to promote peace and harmony. Now, I cannot go any beyond that. If I go beyond that, I'll be crossing boundaries and I'll be liable to whatever the consequences. But I, I don't want to go through that step that because I know my limitation. And I have to add to it certain ways. I mean, if somebody is in the mosque outside, he will give you a different answer because he's not liable to, to the uh, condition of employment that we have as a civil servant. Brixton Prison Mosque is still under construction. It's taken over half the Victorian chapel. Some in the Islamic world may view that as sacrilege, but compromises have to be made in the attempt to build bridges. Committed Muslims, however, remain wary. Being in prison, and if you want to talk about helping the Muslim brothers in different, different countries, you're looked upon different. Because everything you do in prison is written down, is recorded. And like the brother said, you're looked upon like a fanatic, a fundamentalist, or something like that. But it's nothing to do with that. It's just you having your faith. While there are no prison statistics on conversions to Islam, anecdotal evidence suggests it's growing. There is also a belief, but no evidence, that religious guidance is also helping to prevent reoffending. The trouble is, the imam's influence ends at the prison gates. I would like to establish contact with the local communities, the mosque, the local community leaders, so that when the individual leaves this prison, at least I can guide them, tell them where to go to receive further help, further guidance, further teaching. The Muslim population in the English and Welsh penal system has more than doubled in the past eight years. It's now estimated to be around 5,000. Four more full-time clerics are being appointed in other prisons. Islam has begun to take root in the criminal justice system.